Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews. Dan Dan the Art Man's Book Reviews, Episode 54, The Fault in Our Stars, by John Green. Okay, so... Technically, the last paragraph of this post is where you'll find my review of this book. Sorry, I got kind of ranty and went off on how I'm always surprised by books like this one and how my favorite books aren't genre fiction. I know, weird, right? This book was awesome. Most of the books I read have fantastical story worlds, or magic, or advanced technology, or cool weapons. Basically, I read a lot of sci-fi and fantasy, because that's what I'm interested in writing. That said, my very favorite books of all time, novels that I read multiple times because they're just that good, have not been in these genres. My favorite books are a lot like The Fault in Our Stars. Surprisingly, they're not genre fiction. Normal characters in tough situations dealing with growing up and all the pain and learning that involves. Pretty much coming-of-age stories. They always seem to get me. I don't think I have one favorite story, but I do have a few that are tied for first place. The first is called The Body by Stephen King. Yes, the one they made the movie Stand By Me from. It's not a horror story. It's a story about a kid who is invisible to his parents because his older brother died and his friends are his support system, and the novel depicts that time in the character's life so well that you feel like it was your own personal history you got done reading when you finished the book. The characters become your friends, even if you're a grown man and they're just kids. You feel like you were really there with them. The second is The Absolutely True Story of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexie. It's about a Native American student who gets fed up with the education he's receiving at his school on the reservation, so he transfers to a rich white school to get a better education. There he plays on the basketball team and makes new friends and changes and grows as a person. I know, right? These don't sound like books I would even enjoy. And they're the best books I've ever read. I think it's because they do such an amazing job of telling the story through the eyes of the character. They're both first person. Both coming of age. Okay, so I was reviewing The Fault in Our Stars, right? Okay, let's get back to that. So, The Fault in Our Stars doesn't sound like a book I would read or enjoy, but I loved it. A girl who's terminally sick with cancer meets a boy. They fall in love. But bad, sad things happen. I won't spoil anything, because what happens is not what you're thinking will happen. It's such a great story full of funny, true, genuine characters with quirks and amazing dialogue and emotional, memorable scenes. You'll leave this book remembering a lot of the scenes from it. Most books I finish and think back on and remember a couple of cool moments, this book is full of them. The emotions of the characters are portrayed so well. Their story is sad, but it's also inspiring and amazing. I highly recommend this book. Well, I've got some great news for you, the listener of this podcast, Dan Dan the Art Man's Book Reviews. This podcast is sponsored... Sponsored? (laughs) Sponsored by Audible. Audible sponsored. I don't know. Uh, But I love Audible. I am a member and have been for years. I have two hours of commuting every day, and so I get pretty much all of my reading done by listening to audiobooks. 
Some of the audiobooks I get are huge epic long fantasy novels or Stephen King's The Stand, talking like 45 hours. These audiobooks usually go for a retail price of like 60 bucks. But for me, I just pay 15 bucks a month and I get one credit to spend on any audiobook of my choice. Audible has a huge selection. If you want it, they've got it. If it's available in audio, I'm pretty sure they'll have it for you. So go to audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews to get your free audiobook. And this week I'm recommending The Fault in Our Stars, written by John Green and narrated by Kate Rudd, who did a fantastic job of narrating this story. And a uh, fantastic actor and audiobook narrator, really bringing the rich, deep, and complicated emotions of this story to your ears. It was a delight to listen to. I really, really liked it. The Fault in Our Stars by John Green, narrated by Kate Rudd. Go get it for free at audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews. Or you can get any other audiobook of your choice. You get one free book and 30 free days of their awesome service. So check them out. If you're a member, you get books at a discount. They usually give you a free audiobook once a year, like around Christmas time or different holidays. I just love Audible. Can't say enough good things about them. And I love having all of my audiobooks in my pocket on my phone at any time. I can just download one and I'm good to go. So thank you to Audible for sponsoring this podcast, and thank you if you go get a free audiobook, because that will help support the show. Now, let's get back to that review. Man, this book was really, really good. It's a little bit of travelogue as the characters travel some. There are some very very interesting characters that you're just not going to run into in other books. Um, teens and angsty teens with lots of stuff going on. Oh, and also they have a disease that will most likely kill them. So just think of that time in your life when you're a teen and the smallest thing seems so important. Now think about uh, the fact that you probably are going to die. That stuff just lends itself so well to drama. And I think a lot of people have said, oh, he just wrote a book, a, a cancer book, just to get readers. But he actually worked in a hospital with kids that had all kinds of terminal illnesses. And I guess he waited several years just to kind of get to a point where he could write this story. And to him, it's a very personal story because he knew a lot of people like the characters in this book. So he has an awesome depth to draw from and a wealth of knowledge, personal knowledge of interacting with people like the characters in this book to draw from uh, as he wrote it. And it really comes out well. And like I said, the characters are just really authentic. I think that's what I really like in books because Stephen King, man, he writes authentic characters. The characters in Tiz and Angela's Ashes and Teacher Man by Frank McCourt. Uh, that's that's mostly nonfiction autobiography, but those were so good because as an old man, Frank McCourt was really able to write in the voice of a child. And he writes the stories in the voice of who he was at the time when he's writing about his childhood. And it's just so well done and so authentic. It's almost like a child wrote it. And when Sherman Alexi wrote the absolutely true story of a part-time Indian, he really nailed the voice of that, uh, I guess, preteen or young teen main character of that book. Um, and that one is a little autobiographical as well, but it's fiction. But in all of these stories, the characters are just so real and so authentic. And a lot of sci-fi and fantasy pulls this off really well too. And that's why I tend to like that stuff as well, but sometimes that's more about the technology or the fantasy world and the magic system. Uh, but I think we can all agree that we really like it when they do the characters well. If there's an amazing story, but you don't care about the characters, 
you don't care if they're going to succeed or die or anything, then you don't really care that much about the story in most cases, or at least that's the case for me. In uh, Brandon Sanderson's first massive tome, The Way of Kings, the first book in his Stormlight Archive, honestly, I didn't really care about the characters until like the last quarter of the book. And that book is insanely long. I think the audiobook is 47 some hours long, and the paperback is over a thousand pages long. It did have really cool, that had a really cool magic system, really cool world, but I didn't really care about the characters. Once I got to the climax of the story, I was totally in, and for whatever reason, then I finally loved the characters. And then in the second book, I really loved that book because I was already super invested in the characters and wanted to know more about them. Uh, but in this book, The Fault in Our Stars, I just, I just loved the characters. And getting to spend time with them as I listened to or read the book was just fantastic. And this really is one of those books that I will read many more times. The ones I already mentioned are some I've read several times. Last year was the first time I ever read through all of the Harry Potter books. I know I'm going to read those again, because those characters are just so lovable. So, anyway, I'm sorry if I haven't uh, done a ton of reviewing of this book, but <laughs> it is such a popular book. If you need a more in-depth review, just Google it. But this is just kind of me telling you why I liked a book. And I loved The Fault in Our Stars because of the great, rich characters inside. That's all I've got for you guys this week. I hope that you have a great week of reading, and I'll see you next time. Mike, take it away. This podcast is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivative works license. Music by Kevin McLeod, found at Incompetech.com. The website that goes with this podcast can be found at dandantheartman.com. And you can follow Dan on Twitter, Google+, and Facebook at dandantheartman. For Dan, this is Mike Luoma, saying happy reading, and we'll see you next time.